हेलो फ्यूचर डॉक्टर्स वेलकम टू दिपेनिज्म आई एम डॉक्टर दिपेन शाह एंड टुडे वी आर स्टार्टिंग विद द टॉपिक ऑफ सर्कुलेशन एज वी आर अवेयर सर्कुलेशन इज ऑफ मेनली टू टाइप्स दैट इज द ओपन सर्कुलेशन एंड द क्लोज सर्कुलेशन इन द ओपन सर्कुलेशन द ऑर्गेनिजम्स डू नॉट कंटेन द नेटवर्क ऑफ ब्लड वेसल्स एंड हार्ट डायरेक्टली पम्प्स द ब्लड टूवर्ड्स ऑल द टिश्यूज एंड ऑर्गन्स एंड द ऑर्गन्स आर फ्लस्ट विद द ब्लड so this is not a very efficient system that is present mainly in the invertebrates whereas the closed circulation consists of the network of blood vessels wherein the organs receives efficiently all the components of the blood so this is a highly evolved closed circulation closed circulation is a characteristic feature of mainly the vertebrates william harvey was a scientist who discovered the closed circulation and that is why he is considered as the father of modern physiology the first part of circulation deals with hematology the word hem means blood and logy means study so let us discuss the study of blood when we discuss about the blood the blood is basically reddish in color and because of the presence of the pigments that is the hemoglobin present in the rbcs also the origin of blood is through mesoderm that is through the middle germ layer the average volume of blood is around 5 liters in an adult apart from this it contributes around 8% of the body weight ph of blood is very important it is between 7.3 to 7.45 usually it is around 7.4 that is an alkaline ph and it is this narrow range of ph of blood which has to be maintained a ph more than that can cause alkalosis a ph lesser than that will result in acidosis and both the conditions can result in death of the patient so ph has to be maintained this ph of blood is maintained by the organs that is the kidneys so kidneys are not just excretory organs they also perform osmoregulation and they maintain the isoionic concentration and they maintain the h plus ion concentration that is how they help to maintain ph of blood even hemoglobin of the blood has the role of acting as a buffer and it maintains the ph of blood so these are the certain characteristics about the blood now let us discuss about the composition of blood so blood basically is a fluid connective tissue as we read the term tissue that means it will have connection it will have collection of cells and connection means there will be presence of a matrix that is the medium so basically blood consists of the group of cells and it consists of the matrix which we call it as the plasma now remember that the blood is considered as a false connective tissue the reason for that is it does not consists of fibers usually connective tissue contains elastin fibers and the collagen fibers so this fibers are absent also the cells of the blood do not produce the matrix whereas in connective tissue the cells are the ones which produces the matrix and the fibers so hence remember that blood is considered as the false connective tissue since the matrix is the fluid part we call it as fluid connective tissue and that is the plasma part remember that when we take 100 ml of blood the 45 ml is the cellular part and the 55 ml is the plasma part so plasma contributes 55% in the blood part and the cells contribute to the 45% part in the cells there are three types that is the erythrocytes that is the rbcs there is the leukocytes wbcs and thrombocytes that is the platelets when we discuss about plasma out of the 55% composition of the plasma 90% of plasma consists of water apart from this in the rest 10% are the solutes and one of the most important solutes are the plasma proteins plasma proteins like serum albumin serum globulin serum fibrinogen and serum prothrombin are the most important plasma proteins we'll discuss in another segment about this plasma proteins as well apart from this 
3% of the solutes consists of the nutrients like glucose, amino acids, which are the digested nutrients which has been absorbed into the bloodstream. Also, it will contain gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide, which will be somewhat dissolved in the plasma. Apart from that, it will contain the hormones and hormones are secreted by the endocrine glands directly into the bloodstream. In fact, the plasma also contains the nitrogenous waste products like the urea and uric acid. And it also contains the inorganic compounds, inorganic salts, mainly in the ionic forms or the electrolytic forms like Na+, Cl- and other ions as well. So that is about the plasma part. When we discuss about the cellular part, as we are aware there are three types of cell. In today's segment, I will be dealing with the one type of cell that is the RBCs or the erythrocytes. So erythrocytes, the word cytes means cells, erythro means they are reddish in color. When we describe about the size of RBCs, then RBCs are 7 microns in diameter and they have around 2.5 microns of thickness. Remember, increase in size of RBCs as well as decrease in size of RBCs, both are pathological conditions and that can both could be a signal of the anemia. So, when the RBC size increases, we call it as macrocytic and when it becomes smaller in size, we call it as microcytic. Remember, the largest sized RBCs are present in amphiuma. Amphiuma is an amphibian which has the largest RBCs in the world. Coming to the next parameter about the RBCs, that is about their shape. Now, the shape of the RBCs are circular and biconcave. In fact, this shape helps to increase the surface area so that more hemoglobin can be accumulated because the major function of RBC is mainly done by the hemoglobin. So the circular and biconcave shape is highly useful. So that is about their shape. Also remember that the RBCs are enucleated. There is absence of nucleus. I want to tell an important point that when the RBCs are produced, they are produced as the cells known as erythroblast and these erythroblast cells they have presence of nucleus but when the maturation process occurs then the nucleus gets degenerated for a very simple reason space for hemoglobin so the shape of the rbc the absence of nucleus they are both helping for the additional space required for hemoglobin in fact rbcs are not only deficient in nucleus they are also deficient in endoplasmic reticulum even ER is absent so this provides them more flexibility apart from this lysosomes do not uh, sorry apart from this RBCs also do not contain mitochondria and since they do not have mitochondria they are going to perform anaerobic respiration and that is also required because the hemoglobin has to transport the oxygen to different tissues it should not be using the oxygen for itself so that is why mitochondria is absent and it performs anaerobic respiration so it does not have er it does not have golgi bodies it does not have mitochondria so in spite of being deficient in all these components rbcs are very much efficient so being deficient makes them more efficient remember this point Apart from this, coming to the next parameter, that is about the count. Now, RBCs are usually present in millions. In fact, they are the most abundant cells in our body and they are present around 5 millions per millimeter cube. Slightly less amount of RBCs, RBC count is lesser in women because of the physiological process of menstruation and also the body surface area of males is comparatively more as compared to females that is why the RBC count is more in males. Apart from this, the lifespan of RBCs is around 120 days that is of around 4 months. Now, so these are the 4 major characters that we have discussed that is about size their shape, their count and their lifespan. Moving to the other such characters about the RBCs that is about their formation. So where are the RBCs formed? RBCs during the embryonic stages when the baby is developing during the stages of pregnancy. So during that embryonic stages remember that RBCs are formed in liver and spleen. Also the first organ 
to form rbc in an embryonic stage remember it is yolk sac so remember a very important point for your neat exam first rbcs are produced in yolk sac later liver and spleen will take over the role but after the birth of the baby the main rbc production role is taken over by the red bone marrow yes the cavity consists of certain stem cells which helps to produce the red blood cells the destruction of rbcs during the adult stage mainly occurs in the liver and spleen and remember spleen is considered as the graveyard of rbc so first graveyard is the spleen and if they ask about second graveyard it is the liver where destruction and also recycling of certain components of rbcs take place now increase in rbc count is a condition which is known as polycythemia so that is increase of rbc usually uh, people who go at high altitudes who do frequent mountaineering their rbc count increases by 10% so that is a physiological normal response of the body because at high altitudes what happens is the air pressure is very less that can result in hypoxia of the uh, body wherein there is low oxygen supply so to meet the needs of the body the rbc count increases by 10% so that is a normal condition but otherwise a sudden abnormality occurs and rbc count increases we call it as polycythemia decrease of rbc count is known as erythrocytopenia which can be resulting in anemia so bleeding that is hemorrhage or any other disorder can result in decrease in rbc count which we call it as erythrocytopenia so this was about the other four characteristic that is their formation their destruction their increase and their decrease last and major uh, character that is their functions so rbc has the major function mainly and mainly because of hemoglobin molecule now hemoglobin has the function of transportation of gases that is oxygen and carbon dioxide the oxygen is transported in the form of oxyhemoglobin wherein from the lung alveoli oxyhemoglobin reaches up to the tissue cells it dissociates and oxygen is given to the tissue cells wherein aerobic respiration will be taking place and in exchange carbon dioxide from tissue cells is carried back by the blood major form of carbon dioxide is transported by the plasma in the form of bicarbonates but some amount of carbon dioxide combines with the amino group of the hemoglobin where it forms carb amino hemoglobin and this co2 is transported up to the lung alveoli from where exhalation of co2 takes place so one function is transport of gases other function of hemoglobin is mainly it acts as a buffer as you mentioned it acts to maintain the ph of the blood and it is a very efficient uh, uh, molecule in maintaining the ph of blood also it maintains viscosity of the blood that is the resistance to flow is because of the presence of hemoglobin in the rbcs remember that hemoglobin is a conjugated protein and this conjugated protein mainly consists of heme part and the globin part heme is the iron part that is fe2 plus which is a iron porphyrin complex and globin part is the protein part which consists of the four polypeptide chains in detail we'll discuss about hemoglobin in some other segment but these are the major points that we have discussed about the composition of blood where in detail we discuss about the plasma and one cellular part has been completed that is the discussion about the erythrocytes or the red blood cells in my further segment i'll be discussing about the wbcs or the leukocytes so stay tuned for my further videos that's all from the painism